Hey family, welcome to the Love You More show. And uh, do me a favor, hit that little notification bell, okay? Make sure that you click that on to make sure that you never miss an episode. And of course, make sure throughout the show, you like, share, and you comment. I do hope you enjoy this show and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's coming up next. Flat out. Next on the Love You More show. You want Av, I'm Av, and it's Av Unfiltered. I got a podcast too. Because it's one thing to be the associate pastor's wife. It's yes. another thing to be the senior pastor's wife. Yeah. You know, there's an expectation. Yeah. And I feel like I'm just enough, you know, education and yes, God and all of that. And also, you know, drop it like it's hot if I need to. <laughs> so it's, I was not the best wife at the beginning because I immediately became mother. Marriage is a real life commitment to God on behalf of the other person, okay. not to the person. I think the hardest part for me, I want to speak to me personally, is the lack of, are you okay? Versus, you know, the screenshots that I know you passed around or, oh my God, what's happening? Love you more. Indeed, family, it is the Love You More show. I'm your nephew, Willie Moore Jr. So grateful and thankful for you uh, being here today. Listen, I just want to number one say thank you. We have now gone up to over 155 thousand subscribers in such a short Ooh. time depending on where when you're watching this we may be over a million too but just know right now as we speak we're over 155 thousand subscribers and i want to start like really bragging but i just want to lift jesus right now i would love to tell you that we came up with this amazing strategy and what we wanted to do was this and then we did this and then we did this but the truth is we didn't do none of that all we did was put episodes out and thanks to god expanding our territory and pricking your heart and you watching it now this thing is expanding all around the world it's almost like i can't go anywhere without somebody saying hey i see the podcast and this is what i tell them it's a show <laughs> let's get that out the way and you owe me a hundred dollars if you've been watching and everybody laughs but i wanted to take the time in the beginning of this show to tell you how much i appreciate you all right family listen if you're new to the show i want to challenge you to subscribe to this channel of course you know that there are so many different shows to to be watched but if you want to be a part of what we're doing please subscribe to this channel i need you to do it i like to see them numbers go up all right family today i get the esteemed privilege to hang out with a young lady that i've watched for years and years of course many times when you see people you never get the opportunity to get to know them i was riding the other day and i was thinking about you know, just powerful women that I've seen um, have the proper decorum in victories. I see them in, in trials and just a person who was able to stay steadfast in all that she was going through. And I said, I got to call this lady and see if she could come this week. And luckily for us, she was able to come. She is a mother. She is a wife. She's an entrepreneur. She is a speaker. And guess what? She got that neighborhood in her too. Just like Eerie. me. You gonna feel it in your shot. Nah, nah. I get the esteemed privilege right now to hang out with the one and only Aventure Gray. What's going on, sis? Brother, what's going on? This is amazing. I'm so proud of you. Come on. I'm gonna take them claps. I'm gonna Lord give you Jesus. claps because you yeah. deserve it. And yeah. I hate when people see their their friends and family doing mm -hmm. well and they don't mention it and they yeah. don't say anything about it. Like, oh, that's cute. No, it's amazing. Yeah. Every opportunity that you have to use the marketplace to lift up Jesus and to be authentic is beautiful. So love you more is getting dear to my heart. It I did. found it too and I love <laughs> it too. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for Ab, having me. Ab, listen, I've been watching you for a long time and I know um, you have literally been one of the most amazing, consistent people that I've ever seen in my life. So I do appreciate you being here. Mm -hmm. So the way we do it here on the Love You More show, we like to do an icebreaker and we use music as our icebreaker. Okay. So this particular song is actually called Clockwork. And it's a time when I was going through a lot in my former marriage and I decided to go to counseling. Check this out. Okay. So wifey started counseling and she thought it would be a good idea for me to come to counseling. Man, don't nobody really want to do this. Cause I know she'd been telling this woman all my business. I walk into counseling. I didn't know her counsel was this fine. She been telling all my business. I walk in. Hey, ladies. Oh, um, I was at the wrong spot. And um, uh, I thank you for joining us. Truly my honor. Willie Mo. She. Nice to meet you. My honor. This is my counselor, April. So nice to meet her. Wifey like. So glad you can make it, darling. It's truly my honor. You look amazing. You do too. Energy in the room, a little tears. Wife done told my business. So. Let's, um... Talk this out. In front of her, damn. I'm like, okay. 
You ready? I am. You know, um, whatever you want me to do, I'm with it. Are you going to tell the truth? I promise I'm going to tell the truth. You worth it. Her eyes lit up like a Christmas tree when I told her she was worth it, child. Time waits for nobody. But if I could turn back the hands of time, I would do you better. That's what you want to love I have for you. It's like the clockwork. It never stops. This is... Now I am not a mind reader But I can tell you're lonely overlooked But what's funny is I put a ring on your finger We both said I do, but we both know the truth And yeah, lately we've been feeling single Cause we don't take the time to love each other right Preachers say we need communication Tonight let's be some love language The song is Clockwork. That's crazy. Come I on. love it. Make sure you go download it if it's available right All now, right. depending on where you watch it. So Av, Av the, the the scene is we decided to go to counseling because we were going so much, going through so much in our relationship. You know, I know that you have literally moved so many times. In fact, I think you were seven and a half months pregnant when you had Ooh, to move Lord Jesus. to to Houston. Lakewood in Houston. Mm -hmm. Only later on to have to move to Greenville. Talk a little bit about the conversations that you had to have with your husband to uproot your your family, and you already pregnant, and you now have to go. Like, what were those conversations like, and did it require some form of counseling? Wow. I know we're taking you back. Wow. Now it's been a minute, but I just remember that. No, I'm I'm literally sitting in in my living room, remembering what I had on yeah. purple shirt um, wow. that said "baby loading." When um, my husband shared with me that he had heard from Pastor Joel and um, that he wanted us to move to Houston. And so I was like, OK, when? And he was like, well, as soon as we can. Mm. And I said, OK. And um, what I want to go back to is is proposal day. My husband at that time was very candid with me. He was like, um, I'd like you to go on an adventure with me. That was a part of the proposal. And I'm like, OK, what type of adventure? He was like, I don't know where we'll live. I don't know what city we'll end up in. I don't know. Um, wow. Sometimes we'll have money. Sometimes we won't. He was like, I move by faith. And, you know, if you accept, you know, being my wife, we're going to be on a roller coaster just living out whatever I feel like God is telling me to do in a moment. He was like, are you ready for that? I was like, I think I can be. I think Wait, I can be. KD, that was so good. I'm learning so much right now. Go ahead. Yeah. And so I looked at him and I looked at my parents and I looked at the people in the room because he had a surprise. Well, it was a graduation party for me and a surprise proposal, you know, engagement party. And um, I said, yeah, I can go on an adventure. I said, I'm a rider. So, yeah. you know, when you feel like you want to jump off the track. Come on. Put you back on. So it was literally in that moment that I remembered what I said yes to. And I said yes to an adventure. So, all right, I'm pregnant. Who will accept me? You know, what gynecologist is going to take me this late in pregnancy in Houston? You know, what does that feel like and look like? I said, so if it's God, he'll have it lined up. Yeah. And first gynecologist I call connected uh, her to who I was already seeing here, beautiful black gynecologist, Michelle oh, Martin, right here in Atlanta, yeah. uh, who had delivered for uh, at Northside here. And she connected me with someone in Houston who said, based on my previous 
you know, um, experience with four that she didn't feel a rift in taking me. Mm -hmm. So she took me on, which never happens. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen like seven months pregnant. I met with her and we immediately clicked. And so that was my first piece that I was going to have somebody that would take me and know that she would be coming in the next couple of months. Yeah. Um, a month and a half. And that's two, two. That's two, two. Okay. Yeah. Four is an AT alien. She's a Houstonian. Okay. So, um, when when we got the call from Pastor Joel and he invited us out, um, I said, OK, well, let's go. What is God telling you? What I signed up for was to believe that you were hearing from God. And so if you said this is what you heard from God, then I'm going to take that as a yes. He had already been inviting him multiple times, like on Wednesdays, and then it started becoming more frequent. Yeah. And I said, I believe this is an interview. Oh, so you were, you could already feel yeah. it. So did you grow up with like a father who was a pastor? Like how were you so able to go with somebody who's going to take on, take you on this I faith adventure? I grew up adventure? in church. I you grew, grew up, up missionary church. Baptist. I'm a country girl. I'm from Alabama and I wear that as a badge of honor. Dothan. Southeast Alabama. Dothan, Alabama. Yeah. Holla at me. Dothan, <laughs> the dot. Circle City. Okay. <laughs> About 68,000 people, but we D. big. Okay. Yeah. Real big. Um, no, seriously. It's Southeast Alabama is in the tri-state area. Area. So mm -hmm. I'm 15 minutes from Florida, 20 from Georgia, whichever way you go, which Got is it. how I ended up going to Florida AM and m uh, to college. Shout out to the rallies. Shout, shout out to the rallies, HBCU life. Um, but in regards to hearing from God uh, for moving. So my father, <clears throat> no, he's not a pastor at all. My father could be founded in the club gambling and drinking yeah. but he was a great provider yeah. now mommy she's usher board number two the general usher board president <laughs> so and so yeah. all of that yeah. daddy not so much but they click yeah. they'll be married for 55 years on march 28th i love it so i guess it's that thing where the opposites you know yeah. they really do attract he loves the lord he has a relationship with god but my dad uh, was a foreman and uh construction worker and yeah. then after he um, retired from that, he started driving eighteen wheelers. So he was in and out a yeah. whole lot during my during my childhood. So um, I have a great relationship with him, but he was not in the house every single day. I, he was weekend dad because he, he was working. driving yeah. and working because that was his notes for providing provision. Yeah. So um, no, I, I just I just had I'd watched how my mother interacted with my father. He would give her, you know, tidbits of this is what I feel like we need to do, because if I can be honest, my my parents moved from Florida to New Jersey and then back to Alabama. OK, my dad lost a job that he, you know, thought he was going to have. So she had just um, moved into this home, the, my childhood home that they still live in. OK. And he was like, I'm going to have to go back to New Jersey to, like, make this work. And so come back and forth. And is that OK? She had faith in that. Oh, wow. And so that's what I saw. And so he moved there and then he moved back, you know, moved back and forth between New Jersey and Alabama. Mm -hmm. And then until he started driving trucks, which, again, took him out on the road and back. So I find it ironic that God would pair me with someone who was itinerant as well. So yeah. he had to go in. Come on, out. itinerant. You heard that? Um, yeah, yeah. At the time. At the time. Yeah, because we were, you know, we were serving Bishop Long and then he was traveling all over doing mm -hmm. teen mania with Acquire the Fire, uh, Pastor Ron Luce, doing all of that stuff. All of that was happening as we got married. Mm -hmm. So I knew we would be traveling everywhere. We would be here, 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 here and here. And so Lakewood was a lot more steady and mm -hmm. a lot more. So I actually welcomed it. I was like, yeah, cool. We get a. Kind of like a, a little piece. Okay. piece. And the relationship between Pastor Joel and John was that of, you know, take care of things here. You can go wherever you want. I'm fine. So he wasn't in Pastor. What I love about Pastor Joel, he wasn't insecure about what John had because they had two different callings. Got it. So they worked. There was a great yeah. synergy between the two of them where as long as he was cool and he didn't need anything, he'd be like, Pastor Joel, what do you think about this? I think you should go, John. You know, that kind of thing. And that, that's we'll Joel go. right that's there. That's him. <laughs> I think you should go, John. Yeah. I think you'd be great smiling. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I didn't I, I didn't have a reservation like I did coming to Greenville. That yeah. was harder. Yeah, I wanted to talk about so that. So going to Houston was great. Um, you know, I found footing there and 
loved it there, loved the city, and everything was great. Mm-hmm. And then, then you get this call. Ron Carpenter yeah, is looking for a pastor. A replacement for him because he said to California, the so. Lord told him to go out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He gets the call. He brings that to you. He gets the call. We're in the middle of filming the book of John Gray, you know, and it's like real time. So everything that was set up for us to help other people in regards to the show mm-hmm. immediately turned to a family moment. Like you're about to become a first lady. Who said that I was going to do that? <laughs> Did I agree to that? Uh, no. no. Um, and it turns to, um, you know, kids are in school. Yeah. I'm about to go. God told me, you know, that I need to move. And the Lord told me that you were the one to take it. And so he's outside on the phone on the October of 2017. Now, mind you, I just had my dream home. We just moved into yeah. July 2017. So October, Dang. the Lord was already doing Three something months. else. Yes. Yes. And he was like, can you come? How soon can you get here? The Lord told me to leave. That's what he said. He said the Lord told him to go to the California. I was like, well, what did that have to do with us? <laughs> that don't have nothing to do with <laughs> us now, does it now? Because yeah. tr- I love Beyonce. I love dance. <laughs> I have tattoos. I went to a HBCU. I'm going to drop it when I want to. <laughs> Are the people going to be okay with that? Because I'm going to be me. I'm not changing for anyone. I love and it. if God is good with me because he made me this way and you're fine with me, how would the people feel yeah. about first lady tattoo wigs, color, braids, mm. today, wig, tomorrow? How will the people feel about that? Right. And he was like, I'm fine with you. I'm wow. rocking with you. And, and, and I was like, Pastor Ron or just, no, my or husband. Just, 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 no, okay, yeah, no, me and him discussing okay, the cool. opportunity, you know, because it's one thing to be the associate pastor's wife. It's yes. another thing to be the senior pastor's wife. Yeah. You know, there's an expectation. Yeah. And I feel like I'm just enough, you know, education and yes, God and all of that. And also, you know, drop it like it's hot if I need to. <laughs> so it's right, right. You got a little ass. It's right there. Yeah. And, you know, I'm don't I'm not Victoria Osteen. I'm not Sarita Jakes. I'm none of those people. I'm Aventer. So it's Aventer. Did you ever feel okay. any pressure? Did you ever feel any I pressure? Like I need to live truth. up to this, this image of what they think I should be. You never had to fight with that? There's an episode on our show um, where I invite first ladies in okay. to talk to me, to share with them you know, my apprehension into stepping into this. Not that I can't. I feel like I've pastored all my life. I've pastored teens who I taught dance to because I'm a dancer, ballet, jazz, tap, modern, um, gym, you know, gymnastics, all of those things I did. I started my first little dance ministry when I was like 14 years old. Okay. And then, of course, going to college, I joined a dance company at FAMU. And then my church under watch care literally started, you know, teaching dance at my church. So it's always been a thing. Then when I got a job in it, when I came to Atlanta, worked at New Birth, I worked at New Birth. I was teaching dance because we had a dance school. So I feel like I've been pastoring teens or people, kids, whatever, Mm -hmm. for a really long time, just not under the auspices of I'm a pastor. I think that people can be pastors of I think that you have pastors in this room who make sure that your show is pastors of the production pastor. Yeah. I think you're a pastor of everything it's just the way you see it mm-hmm. and the way you receive it um I felt pressure in is this going to be okay for you because you you're the one that people see mm-hmm. you're the one who's going to have to stand up and explain why your wife got on a wig that's purple today that yeah. kind of thing so if you're fine I'm fine everybody's fine he's what like if he's not fine if he wasn't fine, I was going to be like, are you, you know, what What are we doing? Yeah. It, it's a, a great conversation piece. And, you know, my husband had a lot of things to kind of realize on his own. That's what I realized what Lakewood was, was kind of a glimpse into where God was taking us. Mm-hmm. What Greenville was is a time for God to kind of unveil a lot of what you've never dealt with, what mm-hmm. I've never dealt with. And so you see God taking you on this trajectory and this very real uh, navigation through life where Lakewood is comfortable. Lakewood mm-hmm. is amazing. It's great mm-hmm. people. I love it there. We still love it. We went when they, a few weeks ago, had a shooting at the mm-hmm. church. Mm-hmm. I said, Lakewood is the safest place to be next Sunday. Mm-hmm. And he was like, let's go. Because you pull up for family. Mm-hmm. They're still our family. They were violated. I know I'm all over the place. No, but that's I'm good, though. You pull up for to... family. That's that adulting coming out of Yeah, you have to. You have and to. so... 
you know, they had been violated. Someone shot at them and all of that stuff is crazy at, at the church that we were even talking about it because you hear about it other places. But when it hits home like that, mm. it's another, you know, another scenario. But Lakewood was comfortable. And that's what I would hear, uh, you know, John speaking about. He'd be yelling, screaming because him and God and their relationship is hilarious. You can talk to him <laughs> about that. Um <laughs> He's like, God, you know, I'm good in Houston. Well, you take me to Greenville, all oh, hell breaks loose. I'm like, no. It, I, and at first I felt the same way until I really had to just extricate myself from John. Yes, there's there's the two are becoming one flesh because when you get married, you don't become. You become for the duration of the marriage. Like it doesn't happen at the altar. That's where people get, they get, oh my gosh, it's the... The yeah. wedding and the da, da, da. no, you're becoming forever. Got and it. so that's when I had to be like, OK, this this for Aventure, what does this mean for me and him? The same thing. What does this mean for for him? It was a lot that God needed to do. He's like, oh, y'all like Lakewood. That's great. Show on Oprah Winfrey. That's amazing. Yeah. God is great. You know, you did this and you went here and you're here and you're here and you're here like that. Great. Go to Greenville. In the middle of Greenville, South Carolina. No disrespect to Greenville. No, I love there. It's Greenville. Beautiful, but think but it's about going like from Houston to, to Greenville. Houston to Greenville. You have like what the fourth largest city in the nation, and then you go to a smaller town who was also, you know, the very last city to get a Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. We have to be very real about, you know, where Greenville is located yeah. and also the history of racism in that area. Yeah. And I, I find it crazy just even thinking about us going there. And initially when Tasha and Kenny, they came to be uh, worship pastors and the music director at Relentless. And then later on, Travis Green coming to South Carolina and mm -hmm. Columbia and, and what God was doing is obviously something that is happening in South Carolina that God needed all of these generals around mm -hmm. to to like take the ownership of whatever that was that needed to go, yeah. including Ron. And yes, I yeah. said it. Yeah. So wow. um. In in the midst of, you know, <laughs> you want Av, I'm Av, and it's Av unfiltered. I got a podcast too. Yeah. But uh, no, listen, I watch it. Watch it. Yeah. Um, but when I think about comfort, comfort is great and you all of everything is cool, everything is cool, but that kind of like gets you settled into where you are and you're not going to God as much and you're not yeah. at his feet much and you're not literally saying, God, what do I do next? So that's kind of what Lakewood was, not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. We did what I feel like God was calling us to do there. When you go to Greenville, this is a work that was started that you're taking over. So you're trying to shift it into a new vision, mm -hmm. which is hard. You're trying to love on the people that were left and kind of confused and didn't even have a, a voice into, you know, you coming. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, the pastor that I like, he's leaving. And then he tells me, here's another person that's coming. Right. Outsized personality. You go from white to black. Yes. Then you go from, you know, someone who is actively filming and has a show on TV and you're like, well, will I even get to hug my pastor because, or how is he or how is she or, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. I can't imagine what the people were going through. And then we have to fill out the city. Yeah. And at the time I had a car. So everywhere I was in that particular car that I don't have to name because it went viral. Um, I'm, She's at the store because you're in that car, you yeah. know, and then yeah. people taking pictures of your car and people taking pictures of your kids. And I mean, it it all it was a lot. And I was like, what is happening? Yeah. It was horrible. So was TV a good thing or a tough thing for you? Um, TV wasn't hard for me. I think it was more hard for my husband. He yeah. kind of speak to that. I was fine because I didn't have to become anything. I think uh, John, I think what I'm realizing about my husband is that he didn't really want any of it. And it kind of happened so fast. He had not dealt with himself mm -hmm. before all of the lights came. Mm -hmm. So then you're in it and it's colliding and people don't give you grace for whatever it is. First time being a senior pastor and the person who's supposed to guide you in it, who gave us promises and tells us, hey, I got you. We got you. Then all of a sudden they're mad at you for coming when they invited you. And now they want 
you know, to take it back and come back. And all. so it's like all of those things. And you're looking at God like, God, now, did we hear you? Right. What were we doing? What did we do to deserve this? The the lights and then everybody's all in your business and they're trying to figure out, well, what's going on with them? And what? So, that's a lot. I, I got to ask you this. So what made you question and talk to God versus looking at your husband? Like, did you hear God Oh, no, correctly? I did. Now, I... I, I asked him if he heard him now. Yeah. I had to, I was like, sir, sir, sir. Yeah. Cause this don't feel, but then I had to go to scripture. It looks exactly what scripture like. Cause everybody likes you. Everybody's pulling up for Lakewood. Everybody, Ooh, you got to show. Oh, oh, that's amazing. But when you're in the Valley, that's where you get to actually grow, actually yeah. know who you are, actually know who you were um, destined to be mm -hmm. because in comfort, you're not stretching. Yeah. But when it's your thing and you're responsible and all of these people you're responsible for, you don't get to be second. Mm -hmm. We didn't worry about how the lights got paid at Lakewood. We right. just worried about coming and being on time. I'm on time for better together for the women when <laughs> Victoria wants me. Right. Pastor, I mean, um, women in the world when Pastor Victoria needs me and when Pastor Joe needs him on Wednesday, that's mm -hmm. fine. Or on the weekend when he's away. That's all we had to worry about. Here, you've got Everything, everything, mm -hmm. you know, rises and falls on whether or not you're hearing from God and that that what you do. Yeah. So um, there were conversations like, did you really hear? And I absolutely know it now on this side, five and a half years in, mm -hmm. almost six years in. I'm like, it was absolutely necessary because yeah. some of the things that we realized even about ourselves individually and collectively, I don't think might have been realized if we had been still in Houston Got it. in whatever the comfort level was. Yeah. God had to bring it all, all and, and with us, not under that umbrella, thank mm -hmm. God, but just you, yeah. you're relentless, your church, your, your, your thing. This is where I'm going to grow you up. Wow. And that's, that was hard. So you're in Greenville. You step out on faith. You have everything going for you at Lakewood. I won't even lie. We excited. We like, yeah, I know John down there at Lakewood. Mm -hmm. Like at that particular time, it's the biggest church, not only yeah, in America, but in the world. Yeah, and we invited friends. Like friends who had never come. been. They had never been. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. To I, sing, to yeah, come like on people, Sundays. Like, it's starting on. to look good on that stage. It's starting to look like heaven. You know, mm -hmm. black, white, Hispanic, like everybody's there. You go to Greenville and then you run into these very, very dark years. And it's like, God, where are you in the midst of all of that? Yeah. I remember when I initially started going through all of my mess in the last three years, I remember my producer, Meg, called and he said, we just need her to be like Aventer Gray. We just need her to be by your side. And I was like, well, that may not be the thing that we can do. I understand what won, won your yes, because John is such a great guy. And he actually told you, he was honest, we about to go on this roller coaster. But the roller coaster became very, very hard to ride on. Mm -hmm. What won your stay in mm. the midst of all of the public scrutiny, the mistakes? Like you stood flat footed and was like, I'm going to stick beside this man. More Love You More podcast after this. You know, our relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, People never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. Public scrutiny, the mistakes, like, you stood flat footed and was like, I'm going to stick beside this man. You know, what's crazy is that I was going to whoop John's ass many times. <laughs> so when people say be like Aventure Gray, what Aventure Gray do you want? 
Yeah. You know, you see what you see. But I yeah. think what people fail to realize is that they're very real humans here. Yeah. Just because you stand on a platform and God called you to it doesn't mean you're not a man. You're not a woman with humanity, with issues. Um, initially, you're like, what in the world is going on? But then I was like, wow, this predates me. This has no- This actually has nothing to do with me. But how did you get mentally there? Because you do counsel and you do okay. therapy and you go, you get low and you stay stay low and you don't start, you don't put on for the city. You know, a lot of times we, and I love makeup. I love hair because you get ready and you love looking good and feeling good. It's beautiful. All of that's great. God gave us all of these, you know, things that we can connect to, to make us feel good. But at the end of the day, when you take all of that off, who are you? And I think, again, I would, I would, I want my husband to speak to him, but I had to realize, you know, at first you're like, well, wait, wait just a minute. What just happened? Um, and and I said this, I think I said it in a, an interview with Larry. I was not the best wife at the beginning because I immediately became mother and was like, oh, you're all right. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, right. But people don't get my side. They don't get my mistakes. They don't get my, and it doesn't justify whatever emotional situations that he had going on, which people still think he did X, Y, and Z, child. I, I, what I know is what I know. Right. What yeah. people fabricate is what they fabricate. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I didn't know we were going to go all here, but yeah. I, what I want to say for people is that marriage is a real life commitment to God on behalf of the other person, okay. not to the person. That's so good. You're making a commitment to God in front of them. God, I'm going to honor you for this person. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do what you said for this person on behalf of this person's in sickness and in health till death do us part. And death do us part is a long time. So you can't look at that part. You got to look at when you wake up in the morning, doing what you can do that day, and then going to bed, wake up and do it again for that day. Because mm. that longevity piece will Jeez. have you in the cloud somewhere and mm-hmm. you already feel defeated because of what happened in the garden. Like we're, we're all sinners. We're going to, we're going to wake up and mess up no matter how hard we try to do it right. And to get it right, we're going to mess up. It's just here. It's mm-hmm. in us. And so you're not finished when you give your life to Christ. Like it's a work that takes place over the course of your life. You don't arrive just because you've succeeded and made, you know, this amount of money and attained this many followers and all of that success looks different for different people. Success for me is looking at my children, being able to say, you know, mommy's Adidas weren't at the door at the first sign of, you know, heartbreak or whatever. Mommy looked at herself you know, I didn't just place the blame all on that. We it's a collective situation here. I ha- I have been a lot, but I also know that a lot of whatever was came out or manifested in my husband was due to ch- childhood traumas mm-hmm. that black men don't deal with and mm-hmm. haven't had the opportunity to deal with because you always got to be on. You oh, have well. to work harder because you're black. You have mm-hmm. to do more because you're black. You mm-hmm. have to, you know, you know, kind of push that to the side and provide for your home, provide for your family. And nobody asks you how you are. Yep. Nobody ever says, man, you know, what's it like to care for a wife, for boys, for for daughters? You know, what's it like to wake up and realize that you have a whole household to care for it and it rises and falls on you standing up and getting up, showing up. Or nobody ever does that for men. And then for black men, that's, a, that's the extra layer. And I think about, you know, my husband, he he really missed his father. You had a great mother, but she she did what she could do for you. And that part of the manhood, that part mm. got left out. And the overdoing of whatever she did, not her fault. She wasn't there for the abuse moment. So she ain't going to miss no other moments. Yeah. So now it might be over the top. And there's that balance of trying to figure out what's too much, what's not enough for be there for my son, yeah. all of that kind of stuff. So that plays a part into it. Yeah. And I just had to realize I was like, man, this is crazy. And then you don't get the 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 luxury of being in anonymity while this is happening. That's so that part. Um, that part is extremely hard because you get the 
oh, she's a rider. And then you get, oh, she's a doormat. And I'm like, well, I'm going, I am what God says. And that's what I had to connect to. Cause yes, tears crazy. Did I leave and move and leave him and do all of that? Absolutely. Thank God. You know, we still have our home in Houston left, went there, stayed there, all of that. You want to work on it? What do you want to work on it for? Because I'm not working on it for people. I'm working on it for if you want this, it's, you know, Mm -hmm. and you get the everybody has something to say. Everybody has an opinion, but it's just eyes on God. Like I'm standing on God's business. I I don't have I don't I cannot respond to everybody. Like if it gets too far, I'll be like, all right. As initially I would. I would be like, nope, that's wrong. No, yeah. this isn't an apology gift. I this car was being built in February of 2018. Yeah. We were speaking somewhere for the NBA All Stars. Was like Lamborghini got a SUV. What you know? Yeah. We go over there and build it. Don't even have enough money, but book comes in and you like, boom! I'm yeah. gonna get this for my wife. For my it, wife. But people don't know the story, and I don't care to tell them. You yeah. know anymore? I used to want to correct everything. Taking a page out of Beyonce's book. Think whatever you want. Yeah. As long as God knows, I know, our children know, that's what I care about. And also the people you call to, your congregation, you do owe them a mm-hmm. certain level of transparency. And that's mm-hmm. what I love about my husband. He'll tell you. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And that's what I love about me. We not for everybody. That's just yeah. it. But whoever we're for, we hope that you see God in what it is that we do, which is tell the truth, honor the Lord, and then just be about his business and not worry about anything else. You know, I think the hardest thing for me as I was going through so much in the last two or three years is that it's like when I would walk into places and I would just feel that energy. And then I just had to learn, like, I'm of no reputation. Like, I'm going to keep my head up, chin out, put my chest up and do whatever I had to do. That is and, hard. And it's just it's like, it's hard to walk you know, in and you like, like oh, I go, there they gonna, go. Or go this mucky muck school <laughs> where everybody's, you know, it's well to do and everybody's doing. And I'm just looking at everybody. And I'm just like, and then I just remember sitting in the car and I was crying. And I was like, God, this is very, very tough. And it was a challenge to me to say, are you doing this for them or are you doing this for me? Because if you're doing it for me, this will come with it. OK, yeah. I don't need everybody to be in love with everything that you do. I need people to see that you're human so they can see the God that you run to. Yeah. And so now that I look at you, I'm just like, uh, you could you could have said anything that you wanted about her. But the proof is in the pudding. When I seen you drop all this weight and go into like now you have this bold confidence and the freedom that you have. And I know that this version could never be this version without that. So I wanted to kind of get into like, okay, what was the mindset? How did you deal with this? And all I keep hearing is an arrow that's pointing right back to Jesus. Yeah. And that's and that's the biggest thing. I do want to talk to you just about friends and people that were in your circle. And then you go through these very, very unique, tough times. Everybody's running and calling because you go in the Lakewood and can we get on the stage? And then you go to Greenville. Everybody want to come because you with Ron Carpenter. And then you go through these very unique times and it's like the phone stops ringing. How does a wife support a man when you already know that he's living in a deficit of, of love because he always wanted it from his father? Like, how do you support a man who was so giving to everybody for the platform? To come to you and I've know I know you just spirit, try to spirit by the spirit that we don't even like him. Why are we bringing him? But he still does this, and then <laughs> we have bad times. Yeah, and then nobody calls. What does those years look like? And how does a wife support a man who has to go through that? It's really hard, you know, because I, I know the hearts that we have. I think that was a connectivity point uh, for our marriage. It was love of God, love of family, love of music. Yeah. And love of people. Mm-hmm. So um, any opportunity that he can give to anybody or just open the door and somebody rush right in, he'd love to see people win. Mm-hmm. I think the hardest part for me, I want to speak to me personally, is the lack of are you OK versus, you know, the screenshots that I know you passed around or Oh, my God, what's happening? But, oh, my God, what's happening could call my phone. Like, if you want to know, you could call me yeah. instead of everyone else. So what about your friends? Um, I have people that I've known for years that I really didn't know for years. Whew. And then I have people that I've known for the past couple of years 
who I feel like are lifers. Mm -hmm. Like if, if I could do it again, my wedding party might look a little different. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I, I want to talk to women about, is especially when, when you are getting ready to be married. Make sure you want to see those pictures 10 years from now. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't marry and invite people for the relationship you have now, like that longevity. Make sure people are in their proper portholes in your life and yeah. in their proper space in your heart. Um, for me, I I never change. I'm the same. Like, mm -hmm. if you need a kidney in and match, I, I'm gonna give it to you. Like <laughs> right. that, because obviously we don't need half the stuff we have. We live. I live. I've had multiple ectomies, and that's what I, I know. This is weird to kind of correlate. I don't have tonsils. I don't have adenoids. I don't have an appendix. I don't have my thyroid. Might not have a gallbladder and a little bit like. <laughs> so at first I was like, God, you know, why do we have all this stuff that makes us sick if we can live without it? So that's a question between me and God. But then I look at in different seasons, whatever was making me sick had to go. Mm. So I am a poster girl for ectomy. Weird. So when a certain season shifts, certain people can't go. Got I remember, I think it was Tyler was saying, and he might have said it publicly, but this isn't a personal conversation. He was like, the higher you go, there's not enough oxygen at the altitude that you're going for everybody to fly with you. Mm -hmm. They either, the whole plane gonna crash or you're gonna fly high with the ones that are supposed to be there. Okay. So I have to realize that sometimes God has to shake what you want, even if people have presented in times like They've hurt you. They've shown you who they are, but you you're so in love with them. You keep loving and you keep and it's nothing wrong with keeping loving because we all need the grace that that God gives to each one of us. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes people, they'll use you until they can anymore. That and hurts. then when you decide to choose yourself, they get offended. <sighs> yeah. What? Like you call me they out on my all stuff, no. on my they BS, all the and now I'm mad. Yeah. And I can go back and I can like speak to every time that we've been there for you, but we can't get a moment. And now you're over here whispering. That's weird to me. So absolutely. I would I would be a liar if I didn't say that that type of stuff hurts. Yeah. And but when you think about Jesus, he was with people every day that couldn't see him mm -hmm. and he kept them. Yeah. He kept one around. He knew was going to do what they were going to do because mm -hmm. they were necessary. So I, I, when I think about friends, I think about who I am and I've had to learn not to let how they are change me. The heart that God gave me, I cannot shift. Even with being bitter for whatever people feel like I've gone through, I really haven't gone through what it looks like Amen. because I'm here too. He done gone through some stuff, too. You just don't get that part. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I'm not proud of that. I'm just saying it's any normal couple. You don't know what goes on in everybody. So I don't care what they like. OK, ready to smile. Come on, let's go. Right. You don't know. You don't mm -hmm. know what people do. I can think of a couple right now. Pretty prominent, pr pretty, you know, <laughs> prominent. And we know that that's not. That's it's not, not it. that, yeah. you know, but authentically now I can say that I is that. Because, <laughs> You're like, yeah, mine because are real. Go ahead. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Say what you want to say. Between us and God, we know we what do. this is. And yeah. I'm so excited about the free, the newness of freedom that you get to walk in by canceling the noise and then just kind of taking the time to say, God, you know, whoever's called to walk us out with us out in this season, bring them and then siphon and pull away yeah. who shouldn't be or who we don't have the capacity to let go of because of our love. Yeah. Because you can know people for years upon years upon years. And then you realize, man, I really didn't know you at all. You weren't loyal to me. You were loyal to the to the, to the proximity that you got for being next to me, or you were loyal to the opportunity that, I was yeah. given, That's you know, true. giving you, you were loyal to that. But say, for instance, when whatever goes away and maybe me minimize and we don't have this much, we're in a in a in a season of con condensing so that you can just God is bigger than all of your stuff. That's a beautiful place to be because then you get to see who everybody is. Yes. Because as God brings it back or when he does, because he does, he, he does, does it in ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. You have it, then you don't. You have it again and you don't. It's exactly what he said. So I know you heard from God. Yeah. Like it's exactly what he told me at the proposal. He's like, sometimes we'll have everything. Sometimes we won't have a thing. And are you OK with that? I had to check myself and like, yeah, you know what? I am OK with that. Yeah. 
Hey, family, Willie Mo Jr. here. Real quick, can you subscribe and comment to this channel like right now, real quick? I'm just going to pause and wait on you. Thank you. Back to the show. Babies, y'all not wearing Gucci today. Now, we're going to wear Target <laughs> because those clothes are cute and they about 5 to $10. Yeah. But if if I want to put that on my child, why are you talking about it? Why does it matter? You know, yeah. those are those are things that you deal with. And I had to just remember social media is beautiful if you steward it right. Stewarding it correctly. Yeah. But some people are killing themselves because they can't live up to that fake. What, that what's on there, that's fake. Yeah. You well, want to be like other people. So why didn't you... So how did you not get mad at church culture? Because here's the thing. I am mad at church culture. Okay, cool. And I think we need to rip that stuff all the way up. Church culture is killing people. People are running away from God at rates beyond whatever. And I think that's the only thing that hurt me about kind of our situation. I think if we could have presented it, it can, and we can do it, you know, if God says the same in a way that people see that you, you may have a calling on your life, but you also need the God that you're preaching about. You know, sometimes you don't think you're worthy of the deliverance that God is offering to you. And mm -hmm. you feel like, well, I did some, some crazy stuff. So maybe this is why this is happening to me. None of us, well, I don't deserve. Well, none of us. If we all got what we deserved, would we really have anything? Right. That's what that's what I think about all the time. And I'm just like, so whatever God has given you, you take that and you take it and you say, God, I thank you, even though I don't deserve it. And I'm going to do with this opportunity my best so that you get the glory. If people like it, cool. If people don't like it, cool. But knowing that you're doing it for him as to God be the glory, then I think that's where you grow. Yeah. Because we we had to learn that. I'm like, man, well, where is everybody? Yeah. And and it's like, well, where is everybody? As long as God is here, we sh we're we good. Yeah. When when he leaves, you have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Ab, you know, I, I look now and like how we do all this work. You start working out like what happened? Because when I look, you yes. know, because I don't be stalking nobody pages, yes. but it popped up and I was like, oh, she a whole nother person. Yeah. Like. Did you just so for me? They see me because I worked out. I was like, it was either Hennessy or the gym, and I decided the gym and just Hennessy here and there. Come but, on, um, <laughs> that but, was in college like, for me, like, fam. You I your, really loved that. Like, what was your what was what was the thought process <laughs> to change <laughs> to change your to change your body? Because I know you like steak forty eight. I like steak forty eight. I still do. So um, I became an ambassador for a company called Bougie Hippie. Yeah, the okay. girls. Um, Ashley, Antoinette, and Tiffany. So when I was at FAMU, Tiffany and Alexis, they had they were black girls who had a shoe store. Okay. It was called Belladonna at the Governor Square Mall, right down the street from FAMU. Black girls, while we're in college, wow. having a shoe store was a thing. A whole thing. So I reconnected with Tiffany later on, and I was like, girl, you're behind Bougie Hippie, whatever. We start talking, I become an ambassador. It actually works. <laughs> so um, it's vegan, vegan, vegan. Um, gummies and supplements that help to curb your appetite and listen if you're gonna detox it's a moment don't have plans don't go here don't, <laughs> i know yeah shout out to bougie hippie but that coupled with intermittent fasting uh -huh. is what helped me to really drop uh -huh. and when i had a, a, a little health scare in in january and um they put me on some medicine that i actually have gained eight pounds okay. since where I wanted to go to my target weight. I was like, uh-uh, uh -huh, I'm getting off the medicine because I worked too hard for this. Right. It really was the intermittent fasting and and the bougie hippie because I just kind of took time for me. You always give yourself away. And that was what I found myself doing. I was giving myself away. Church, kids, marriage, whatever. But again, that's what my marriage, com my uh, woman's conference is about, the soul of a woman. If you don't nourish your soul, you it. can't give anything to anybody else okay. with authenticity. And that's in? That's in April. And that's in, in Greenville, Greenville South Atlanta, okay. Carolina at Relentless, Relentless, soon to become Love Story Church. So by then it will be Love Story Church. I love it. So we're changing the name because now we do have a real love story. Come on. We've had, we've had to be Relentless for too long and the but, name was fitting. Yeah, because we had to be Relentless. We had to Relentless. be Relentless but coming now we behind have Redemption. A yeah. We had to be relentless. So we're kind of redentless because it kind of like, <laughs> you know, all of that. I so now it. we get to go into to Love Story Church 
new vision, new everything, and just expressing love and my first women's conference, which is April 18th through the 21st. Y'all need to come, come be on, a part. Sure I can't tell women to nourish their souls if I'm not nourishing mine. Yeah. I can't tell women to reconnect with who they are as women without the mother hat, without the wife hat, without the student hat, without the, the daughter who's the caretaker, without the... I, all of the letters behind your name or even in front, if you're waiting to be Mrs. with an MRS, who are you without all of that? And are you pleased with you before you put additives on there? Because yeah. that's where we mess up. If we don't deal with us as we actually are, you can start adding all of these degrees and all of these accolades and getting, you know, the leadership, this and uh, uh, Greeks, whatever. You can put all of that on mm -hmm. and you are still you. And it's going to manifest at the most inopportune time in your life. Ask me how I know. So you need to deal with you so that when God does bless you with what he wants to bring to you, you can handle it adequately and you can handle it with grace for God to get the glory. And you don't have to go through stuff. No, that's so real. So, you know, as as we wrap it up and we, as we put a bow on it, Aventa, what was that time? Like maybe you can remember. When, you know, you have all these children, you got the children, you have your husband, you, now you have this church, you have life issues that are going on. And then you say, nope, I'm going to love me yeah. more. Like, when did you put your foot, foot down and say, I'm going to love me more? I'm going to tell you, um, when, when I decided that God in my relationship was him, with him was more important than my relationship with my husband is when things shifted for me. Cause you're fighting for something and you're fighting together for something. You're trying to figure out what's going on with that when God's trying to figure out what's going on with this. Mm. So in, in, in my vertical relationship with God, I literally am sitting here like, God, are you pleased with Aventer, the daughter? Are you pleased with me? What am I doing? Have I enabled? Have I done stuff that kept that makes me worn out and tired because you're not there? You know, just because it's a good thing isn't necessarily a God thing. And I had to literally sit down and be like, this doesn't feel good. I'm always giving myself away and I'm tired. And that's not the quality of life that I feel like God wants for me. So I started to choose Aventer. I am Aventer then gray. You know what mm. I'm saying? Not before, you know, mm -hmm. and it's okay to become one flesh. That's right. You're becoming the entirety of the marriage mm. until which time you may decide that that's not the route you want to go. That was very real for us at a, in a couple of points in our life, because I'm like, dude, what, what's happening? I love you. I see you. I know what's going on and I know you love me. I don't care what the world says or what the people think. I know what I know. Yes, and I, 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 I really wish I could go there, but I want him to yeah, have that yeah, opportunity. Yeah. But it will help so many people just navigate the authenticity of your real relationship with yourself. If you don't know you, how are you going to get to grow with somebody else yeah. when they're trying to get to know you? Yeah. You're offering them a representative of who you think they want to see. Even in dates now, if people are dating, like I tell people who ask me, oh, what do you think about this person? What do you think about that? I said, well, what do you think about you first? And exactly. then, that's what I, that's and then you can go this way. Cause yeah. that, that, that's where, that's where we, we, we should have landed at the beginning. Yeah. But it's okay. It happened when it needed to happen. Love God story. wrote the story from beginning to end. So he already knew where we would be. He knew the detours we would take. And I've had to give myself grace for the times where I didn't get it right, didn't respond right, didn't do right, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm sure he's had to do the same. But I think for me personally, I decided that the aventure that I wanted to know, the aventure that God saw, yeah, not the one that I had made. I love it. Because you don't realize God created us in his image. We make ourselves other things. Created and make are two different things. So I want the created F, yeah. the one that God, you know, the one that God, I wanted to tap into her. So that, when I did that, I was like, yeah, I don't like a little extra fupa. I don't like all of that extra stuff. And, you know, I can't say that my baby was just born. She's about to be 11. <laughs> You are not a baby when that you're ain't 11. Baby fat. Baby right, that's fat. not baby fat, just little pudgies. Yeah. And but even no, though I it. could carry it well, I was not I did I was too tired and I wanted a better quality of life, so I started to choose me. And yep, that's what I'm doing. How have people taken this new person that you become? 
Cause I have no, I, I had no idea why the Lord was challenging me. <laughs> now I get it totally. Like I was like, God, her. He was like, yeah. I was like, well, I'm gonna just do what you said. Like I was really obedient, not to make it spooky, but I actually pray and I hear from Holy Spirit. So it's like, why her? And was, I was like, well, let's just do it. And then of course I seen, but like, how are you? Are you challenged in the area with people now that they have to? deal with this force because now it is powerful it is freedom it is oh god i don't care what happens there's, this is who i am there's so much freedom in that because you go through the well what will people think and i have to keep at the forefront of my mind what is god pleased with what is god pleased because you listen people are the flavor oh, of the god day did. they'll like your outfit today wear something they don't like tomorrow they're gonna talk about you like a doll yeah you know what I'm saying? And I think for me, I had to get over who whoever is called to my life and whoever's life I'm called to, they're they're gonna be the same. Yeah. Highs, lows, valleys, mountaintops, whatever. Those people are gonna be the same. When he starts shifting people out that you don't have the ability or the capacity to shift out on your own, the agency of God is so big and so vast that he can be like, listen, I'm doing this for you since you didn't have the ability to do it. So whoever loves whatever this app is, that's cool. And people will be like, oh, girl, I see you. Oh, that's great. But, you know, even recently, it's like, oh, she looked like she gained. You know what? I have. I gained about eight pounds back. And sis, sis is about to be on a mission. I'm like, oh, uh-uh, y'all playing. We're going to have to do something else because yeah. I... I am enjoying getting back to the the weight that I was right before I had my son. That's so good. And that's where I was. Yes. Listen, um, I didn't know exactly where we were going. Of course, you know, I always study, show myself approved to make sure that I understand the guests. I've known her for so long, but I've never had the opportunity to know her in this capacity. You know, I remember one time I was sitting there looking at the Internet. I was going through so much. To many of you all, you you may not know, I get a lot of new viewers because of the guests that we do, but I went, you know, you know, somewhat of a public figure. My family's in a public eye. And then I remember I had to make a strong decision to file for divorce. And, you know, it was so difficult to know that the same people who were holding you up and happy for you when you were in the relationship to now be the same people who call you everything but a child of God. And so maybe you, as you sit on the other side of this, camera you may think to yourself man i've been through to, through so much i've done so much people know this people know that um i remember sitting in the floor um contemplating suicide and i'd never ever ever in my life like i'm a very i'm a very um very confident person but for the first time in my life i wasn't somebody's hero being an adoptee always wanting to have a good name overworking to be everybody's hero like for the first time jesus had literally allowed my mask to be taken off because at this time, I'm like, oh, my God, everybody knows. But the truth is, everybody was really this this many people and the people who knew and the people who were supposed to go were supposed to. And so what I started to do and I want to challenge you to do it, if you've ever been through anything, um, I want you to be able to not only thank the people who stayed, but I also want you to thank the people who left, because without them, you can't be this version. I challenge everybody so to say, listen, here, I don't have a I, I don't I, <laughs> I don't listen. I could never blame all the stuff that happened to me and give the blame to that if I don't I got to give them both like it has to have this beautiful thing like if I'm saying thank you God for this moment I also have to thank the people who did me wrong and left and said all type of evil things because I can never be this this version of freedom that the Lord's allowed me to be in this moment so as you sit there and you listen to Av I want you to really pay attention to the fact that there's a new freedom that comes from different things that people have to go through and Av I'm just going to tell you this like I cannot wait to see what God continues to do in the area of women, teenage women. It's a special call on your life for young women yeah. who who have, have been through so, so much. Yeah. And I just think like I just keep seeing like like as you were speaking, I was like, real women are really going to this is not church. This is a new group of people yeah. who desire Jesus, but they desire it this way. Yeah. There has to be a re represent a re representing of what God wants to do. And I think like God is now postured your heart to be that person who's unashamed, unafraid. And I just thank God that you will share your story and your heart um, on this Women's History Month. Women's History. You know, because, right. because you are a phenomenal woman. And I'm so thankful that you would, would be so um, open, free, hot, honest, open, and transparent. I honor you and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you bless you for me. Thank you having me, brother. I learned so much just then.
<laughs> so what I learned, put it in the comments, whatever you learn, just put it in the comments. Like I want you to take the time to say from this interview, I learned this, this, this and this. I got a plethora of different notes that, I, that I'm that i taking internally, but make sure you put it in the comments. Here's the thing. You can also become a part of our Patreon community. I do want you to do that. Um, of course, this set costs, right? Um, what we're doing to empower you costs. So if you would like to be a monthly giver and member of our Patreon, there's so many cool things that are happening over there. Make sure you click the link. All the details are here in this YouTube. I honor you. I appreciate you. Leave a comment, subscribe, and keep on wearing little clothes, baby. Flat out. <laughs> yes, Flat Lord. Out. Yes, Lord. You see these legs? Little Swing. Clothes. Little clothes little ministry. Clothesministries.com. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> Me and Ab with the little clothes. <laughs> yes, Lord. You know I got to keep it real with you. But what I want you to do is I want to make sure that you share this, you comment, you click like, engage with us. Listen, everybody wants to be celebrated, not just tolerated. Don't just tolerate us. Celebrate us by liking, sharing, and commenting. Can't do it without you. That's all you got to do. Just click it. Do that for me. See you next week. Flat out. Love you more. Love you more.